welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin, and in this video, I will be sharing 10 tips for math teachers who have blind or visually impaired students. These tips are primarily directed towards elementary and high school math teachers, but some of them can apply to college classes as well. My first tip is to be descriptive. Blind and visually impaired students cannot see the board. They don't understand what you're doing with the numbers unless you very specifically state what you're doing with the numbers. For instance, you can't say things like, we'll move this down here or drag this over here and expect a blind or visually impaired student to understand what's going on. You need to be very explicit in your descriptions and say things like, we'll carry the one or we'll move this decimal left two places. Make sure that people can follow exactly what you're doing step by step without needing to have visual input. Tip number two is make sure you get all of your class materials to a TVI, which stands for Teacher of the Visually Impaired. This applies to high school students. The college equivalent would be the Access Office or the Disability Services on that university's campus. A TVI will be able to look at your materials and tell you if they are going to work for the specific blind or visually impaired student. If they aren't going to work, they'll be able to tell you how to modify them so that they will work or adapt them as needed so that they are more inclusive. This this may include brailing assignments and notes or finding manipulatives that can be used to better explain the mathematical concepts in a tactile way. It's very important that you do this so that you can provide that tactile representation of the concepts you're trying to explain. It's basically another tool that the blind student can have in their toolbox to help them conceptualize what is going on. It's basically their version of visual input. If you don't get these materials to the TVI, the student can fall behind behind or miss that crucial tactile piece of understanding what's going on in the classroom. It's also important to note that you need to get your materials to the TBI or the University Access Office ahead of time. We're talking at least a week more if possible ahead of time. It takes TBIs a while to adapt the materials as needed and braille them or provide the tactile graphics. You need to stay ahead of the game so the TBI can get the materials to the student at the same time you are providing the materials to the side of students in your classroom. This prevents the student from getting behind and just provides them a more level playing field. Tip number three is to make sure that your blind or visually impaired student understands the visual layout of the mathematical concepts. This can sound a little bit contradictory, but a big part of math is the visual layout. Math is a very visual subject, and if you don't understand how things are laid out visually on the page, it can be very difficult to follow the concepts that you're trying to learn. If your student reads Braille, Braille math problems are laid out pretty similarly to visual math problems, and it's very important that your students see math problems in Braille if they are a Braille reader. It is extremely difficult for a blind student to follow a math class based on audio feedback only. I know I try to do math auditorily. There's a reason why I am a creative writing major and dropped my engineering degree. I could not retain the concepts that I needed to learn without understanding that visual layout. I wasn't given that layout from an early enough age and it just never clicked with me from then on. It is very important that from day one you provide braille math problems or find some other way of explaining the visual aspect of the math problems you're trying to teach. If your student is not a braille reader, you can provide some sense of the visual aspect of it auditorily. Just make sure you are being very explicit in your descriptions of things. Make sure you're describing how the equations look on the page. Describe the left and the right side of the equation. Make sure that that you're conveying how it is laid out because that layout is very important and it is the foundation of future mathematical concepts and if you don't provide it to your blind student as early as possible it will be very very difficult for them to grasp those concepts in the future. Tip number four is be hands-on. Make sure you're interacting with your blind student in a way that they can understand. Don't be afraid to bring in manipulatives. Show them 3D figures. Even if you don't have official 3D representation 
representations of things. Use a Kleenex box to represent a cube and explain how the sides of it relate to the tactile graphic that a TVI has provided of a 3D representation of a cube on a page. Make sure that you are giving them that hands-on feedback because that is the best way for most blind students to learn if they have no residual vision especially. There are also manipulatives you can use like a math window. This is basically a magnetic board with print and braille numbers. You as a sighted math teacher can set up math problems on the math window and walk your blind student through solving those problems. It's a good way for you and your student to stay on the same page because you can see the print and they can read the braille. Note that this is not a replacement for braille pages. It's not going to replace math problems on paper or then solving math problems on paper. It's still important that you get those problems to the TVI and they braille them and that your blind student solve them on paper with a Perkins brailler. You can also use wiki sticks, which are basically wax coated strings that can be bent into different shapes to represent graphics and shapes and things of that nature. There is tactile graph paper that can can help you with this. If you talk to your TVI or your university access office or your blind student themselves, they will be able to direct you to manipulatives that can best help you in being hands-on with your student and supplement the material you're trying to teach. Tip number five is use accessible resources. This means don't try to use Kahoot or iExcel or iMath or any other virtual resource for math classes. They're not going to be accessible for your blind students. It's okay if you're using these for your sighted students, but make sure you provide either an alternative assignment for your blind students or get those IXL or IMAC or Kahoot assignments to your TVI well in advance so that they can provide braille copies to your blind student. Even if online math activities are technically accessible to your blind student with a screen reader, meaning the screen reader does read them, it does not replace braille or tactile assignments. They are missing out on that crucial piece of seeing the math problems laid out on a page and they will not get as much out of it as they will solving them on paper or seeing those 3D representations. It's very important that you are inclusive with the materials that you are using. If you have a braille copy of the math book, you can provide your student problems out of that book, but know that sometimes these are not the best resources for your student either as there can be errors in the braille. Just be flexible in the materials that you're using and make sure what you are providing your blind student is fully accessible to them and does not compromise how they will understand the material. Tip number six is be one-on-one. -on -one. Don't be afraid to pull your blind student aside and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. This can be crucial in making sure they absorb the information. It can be very very, very difficult for a blind student to keep up with what is happening in a classroom full of sighted students. Even if you are being super descriptive with what you're doing on the board, you will move faster because you are trying to teach sighted students and it is extremely difficult for a blind student to keep up with what's happening, even if you are doing your best to explain it. And it may take them longer to fully grasp the concepts and what they need to do to solve certain problems simply because math is a very visual subject. And even if you are providing them with braille copies of assignments or using a math window and other manipulatives, it may take them a little longer to fully understand the concepts and apply them to problems themselves. It can be necessary for you to work one-on-one -on -one with them before or after class. If you work with them beforehand, you can sort of prepare them for what you're gonna be doing in class so they already have that foundation. Or if you work with them after you've taught them the class with the sighted students, you can go back and say, okay, you know how we mentioned this in class, this is what I meant. Let's work on this together and make sure you fully understand the concept. Tip number seven is to familiarize yourself and your blind student with the TI-84 calculator. The only accessible graphing calculator that is available to blind students is an adapted version of the TI-84 that uses speech and audio technology to provide them representations of graphs on the screen. This is not the best option. The Orion TI-84, which is the version of the calculator that has been modified for blind students, is lacking in several areas, but it is the best option we have at the moment, so it's important that you become familiar with it so that you can teach it to your blind student and prepare them to use it on the test. This is the graphing calculator they will be expected to use on the ACT and any other standardized math test they should take. Tip number eight is be careful
careful with group projects. In general, it's best to avoid group work in math classes for your blind student and either let them do their own thing so they can work at their own pace and solve problems in their own way or work with them one-on-one -on -one to make sure they're understanding the concepts while the rest of the class does group work. Many sighted students don't understand how to interact with blind students. It's not fair to the blind student to expect them to be in that situation and it's not fair to the sighted students to ask them to learn to explain things to the blind student. It can set both groups behind in their work. It is okay in some situations to ask your blind student to participate in group work if your blind student is familiar enough with the concepts that you think they will be able to follow what's happening without any supplemental instruction. And if you have a group of sighted students who are dedicated to their work and will be capable and willing to explain the concepts in a way that your blind student can understand, it can be very enriching for both the blind student and the sighted students to work together in a group. This is kind of where you and your blind student and their TBI will need to communicate and use discretion on whether or not you think group work will be helpful or harmful to both the blind student and the sighted students in the group. Tip number nine is lessen the workload. It takes blind students a long time to complete math problems, especially if they're doing it in hard copy braille, and especially in advanced classes like Algebra 1 and beyond. Braille takes longer to read and write, and one math problem can take six pages of braille in an hour to solve, depending on the complexity of the problem. If your blind student can demonstrate that they understand the concepts and can apply them to a variety of problem styles in 10 problems, there is no need to make them do the full 100 problems problems that the sighted students are being asked to do. It's only when your student is struggling to understand and apply concepts that you should ask them to do extreme amounts of problems and it can be beneficial to work with them one-on-one -on -one to make sure they're not wasting their time doing problems incorrectly. Basically, if they can demonstrate that they understand the concept, don't ask them to do more work than is necessary to prove that they understand the concept and can apply it to a variety of problem styles. Tip number 10 is to don't be afraid to challenge your blind students. Just because your student is blind, it does not mean they're incapable of being successful in a mathematical field. Some blind students go on into the STEM field and work in computer science and other aspects of engineering. While you should lessen the workload for your blind student if they can demonstrate that they understand the concept in order to prevent them from spending unnecessary hours solving math problems on a Perkins Brailler, you should also challenge your blind students. Make them think beyond what they already understand. Make them think outside the box and apply more and more difficult concepts as they demonstrate that they're ready to do so. Challenge your blind students just as you would challenge your sighted students. Give them an equal playing field. This not only means making sure that everything is accessible to them and not making them do unnecessary problems, it also means giving them equivalent challenges and making sure they have an opportunity to challenge their thinking and demonstrate their skills. They'll probably hate you in the moment for making them do more and more complex problems in a hard copy braille, but at the end of the course, they will probably thank you for that because not many teachers go above and beyond to challenge their blind students. They see a blind student and their automatic goal is to just make them pass the class and they don't take the extra steps to provide them a challenge. I myself am forever grateful to all the teachers in high school who took it upon themselves to not only make sure that I passed the class, but make sure that I was challenged and successful in my classes. That is the last tip I have for you today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send us an email via challengesolutions.org. There is a contact form in the top menu of our website that will be linked in the description below. Also, keep an eye out for more math-related videos going up on our YouTube channel. One of our team members, Cole Phillips, is creating math videos that are specifically designed to teach mathematical concepts to the visually impaired. He's starting with very basic Algebra 1 concepts and will be working his way up and he is describing the concepts in an auditory fashion that will be easier for blind and visually impaired students to understand. These can be used as supplemental lessons for your blind students in the classroom. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another episode of Challenge Solutions. Oh